Farmer in the Sky was first published in a condensed serial format by Boy's Life magazine under the title of Satellite Scout. The copyright of this series is 1950. The full-length novel I am reviewing was actually published in 1953 by Charles Scribner's Sons at a price of $3.31. It was well received by critics at the time, and rightly so. The novel was eventually awarded a Retro Hugo Award in 2001. Set at an unspecified time in the future, the overcrowded Earth is establishing colonies throughout the solar system, including one on a newly terraformed Ganymede, the third and largest of Jupiter's Galilean moons. Bill Lermer, a teenage boy and Eagle Scout, lives with his widower father in Diego Borough, which is part of the LA San Diego megalopolis, and he is the main character and narrator of the story. This style is a departure for Heinlein, as all of his previous juveniles were third-person narratives. After some debate, Bill and his father decide to emigrate to the farming colony on Ganymede. During their journey with 6,000 other immigrants in the enormous spaceship Mayflower, when a meteor punctures their compartment, Bill saves his bunkmates from suffocation by improvising a patch out of his scout uniform. To combat the boredom of the long trip, the Boy Scouts among the passengers form scout troops. On their arrival at Ganymede, Bill accepts an invitation to live with a prosperous farmer and his family to learn what he needs to know to set up his own farm while his father signs on as an engineer in town. Eventually, the Lermers build their own homestead and are living there when a rare alignment of all of Jupiter's major moons causes a devastating moonquake which damages most of their buildings. In addition, the machinery that maintains Ganymede's heat shield is knocked out and the temperature starts dropping rapidly. Many colonists perish in the disaster, either from the quake or by freezing. The Lermers consider returning to Earth, but in true pioneer spirit, they decide to stay and rebuild. Later, while exploring with an expedition organized to survey more of Ganymede, he and a friend make an amazing discovery. The science in this book is prescient. Early in the novel, we are introduced to a device Heinlein calls a quick thaw that prepares frozen meals in minutes. What Heinlein described, of course, was a microwave oven, an invention not introduced as a household appliance until 25 years later. In addition, he gives detailed descriptions of the complexities associated with planetary ecology, again, decades before the term ecology came into wide use. And Heinlein gives us an introductory course in the concepts of free fall, interplanetary orbits, and the physics of atomic power. While the planetary science about Ganymede is dated, remember that what we believe to be true now will be dated soon as well. So don't let those details get in the way of the story. The underlying themes of this book are strong and are invoked many times during the narrative. They involve homesteading, opening a new frontier, jealousy, self-reliance, and courage in the face of adversity. How Bill handles these many challenges and how facing them causes him to mature is the overarching theme of the novel. This story marches right along and never really gets slow. Bill is a good guy the kind of guy you would want beside you in any tight situation. If you haven't caught the Heinlein bug yet, reading this book will infect you for sure.